Okay, so I got in here and I mopped it all up. Took care of my my boo boo. Don't ever say that my videos are not gonzo. Well, I had a, a a couple things to say about the bathroom in here, and one of them is is that soap niche right there. And I like to use a different camera, but I'm short on battery, so that's why we're using this camera, my phone camera, so I can't show you what my phone's showing you. But that niche doesn't have enough pitch on it. So that water will stay inside of there and you'll be cleaning it off more often. And without enough niche on your pitch, pitch on your niche, without enough niche on your pitch, then, you know, water that sits there is, you know, more susceptible, more prone to enter the wall system over, over time. And we're gonna come back and get him. And like I said, we don't have any, um, discussion plates and our GFCI is, is not labeled. Um, we're moving on along. This is the second bedroom, um, the north bedroom, the house faces south. And you know, everything's supposed to come on, comes on. And this window, unlike the front windows, the ones from the previous video, but this latch right here is very difficult to operate. And again, I'm going to remind you that none of the screens are present. So here we are. Overall looks, you know, pretty nice. Uh, some of the paint looks a little rough right in here. I, you know, probably want to do something with that. I mean, it is a new house, right? Okay. This is the actual, <clears throat> this is a grill. All right. That's a return grill. That's what we should have. That should be a grill. That's a register. All right. So we got the wrong kind of gizmo up there. And the irony is, is that, well, it looks better and it costs more. Okay. So I guess there's some irony to that. We're ironic people. Coming on along, our fireplace hearth. We do not have a glass get, you know, front energy saving glass front, um, and, or is it required? It's a wood burning fireplace, and obviously this is the grate that comes with it. Um, the manufacturer wanted to, you to have, and that holds enough wood. So when you replace this, you want to come back with standard issue type stuff. You really don't want an oversized fire inside of your fireplace. And then I've got some concerns about how it's vented. Okay, of course, the vent in the attic is supposed to bring the combustible air in from the chimney top, but it's supposed to. Okay, well, it's damaged in the, when we saw that. The hearth extension is less than 24 inches. Um, that's just a, a, a guideline that I use. Um, the manufacturer's specification would supersede whether 24 and this, a, you know, 20 inches, 19 inches is enough rather than 24 inches. But as a rule of thumb, we, we're looking for about a 24 inch hearth extension. Coming on along in here and GFCI protected, GFCI protected. We're on the kitchen island. This is not GFCI protected and it should be, and it should be. Coming along here, this is not GFCI protected, and it should be. Now, I use some engineering equipment, and I use towels. You know, one end of the spectrum to the other, but I'm not an engineer, I'm a home inspector. I should stay in my lane, and this is new construction. So this, what I'm about to talk about is probably as built, as built. But just because I do floor height elevation differential measurements, it doesn't make me an engineer. I'm a home inspector and I do not calculate slope. I run by guidelines. And two of the guidelines that I look for is no more than one inch of floor height elevation differential within 25 feet. And we've got to one inch. In fact, this is probably, I think it's the lowest spot in the house or the second lowest spot in the house. As much as, but no more than one inch. The other guideline I use is no more than two inches of floor height elevation differential overall. And I'm getting 1.4. So even though there was as much as an inch there, 
I'm getting 1.4, even though we've got some cracks on the brick on this other wall, that's the west wall over there. Um, that's brickwork, that's brickwork. So, um, you know, I, I gotta say on a new house like this, my opinion about the foundation that is performing the function for which it's intended. So doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, we're moving on along in here. This is the primary bedroom, uh, primary bath, and we do not have a towel on this floor. How about that? Um, but I do want to call your uh, attention here. Um, water does sit right in here, and um, we do have enough pitch on our niche in the primary bedroom. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. This sink, excuse me, lavatory, to me, it seems like it drains a little bit on the slow side. On this bathtub, okay? It seems like it might drain a little bit as well. This one's draining fine. And again, this one's normal. Normal, I mean, when I say normal, it's consistent with the construction. And we're still missing our discussion plate. What, that makes me a liar? That's draining fine. Okay, let's see, let's see how much more I'm lying. Okay. It's just a little bit on the slow side, but you know, it's a bathtub and they don't really drain real fast. I don't like to apologize or discount my work, but it does seem like this is taking just a little bit of time to go down. Uh, the commode is like all three commodes in the home. Yeah, everything's supposed to go down, goes down. Um, the commodes have discussion plates. That's an discussion plate. That's what we're missing everywhere else. The commodes happen to have discussion plates. The lavatories and sinks do not have discussion plates. Get it off. That's, that's my builder right there. I love you a lot. <laughs> okay, now this thermostat, okay, one, it's facing a north wall, so that's not a problem. Okay, if it was facing a south wall or a west wall window, that would be a problem but it's a north window, but it's in the bedroom. I know it's in the bedroom, but we've got another room. Remember I showed you the other thermostat in the hallway? If you've got one, everybody out there has got their thermostat. And then in the primary bedroom, we have a thermostat right here. So it's not an issue, it's a good place. And by the way, it's my favorite thermostat. Uh, yes. If the thermostat is facing a different... They're not that is issue? It's oh, a, I didn't know, that's why I asked yeah. you. If, well, gave me. A, ther a thermostat, okay, shouldn't be facing a western or a southern exposure wow. because the radiation from the sun comes in okay. and warms up the thermostat. Okay. So in the wintertime, it would think, this doesn't go to this house, but in the wintertime, by the way, dear viewers, in the wintertime, the thermostat would think the house is warmer than it is, or, I didn't have you in there, uh, or in the summertime, then... The house might be 60 degrees, but the thermostat thinks it's 75 because of the radiation from the sun's coming in. So the, the whole house will chill down to 55. Or you'll be blowing ice cubes because the radiant heat coming through the window, if you're facing the west or the south, this one's facing the north windows, it's not an issue. Sorry, I, I tell you what, no. <laughs> I tell you what you. My bad. Okay, we've already, we've already been here. This is a little one third horsepower garbage that goes on. And, and um, here's what's going on underneath here, is this switch right here for the air switch, which we're, we're all glad that we have. So we got an air switch here, but it's supposed to be mounted. See the little wings on that? It's supposed to be mounted secure. It's not supposed to float around like that. And then when you get the dishwasher in, okay, well, you notice that we do not have a vacuum breaker up here for the dishwasher, which is fine, which is fine. There's one way to do it. But what is going on here is when the hose comes through the cabinet to connect to your disposal here, okay, it's going to need to come up and touch the bottom of the cabinet up here. You're going to want a nice, long, anti-siphon loop, so the barometric pressure. Now, an interesting thing about this guy, and it's GFCI protected even though it doesn't say it. Now, an interesting thing about this guy, all right, is we got an island, so we can't really put a vent pipe up through the ceiling. So what we have here is an air admittance valve, and it's a mechanical device, and I use them. I mean, I, in my own home, I'm about to install one because I've got my own plumbing issues that we're not going to discuss right now, but 
the thing is, is that they're perfectly nice, they're perfectly good, but they are a mechanical device. And there may come a time when you find some water underneath here, or it might start stinking or something like that. And you have the plumber come out and, you know, it may come a time when the valve itself is replaced. I've never seen one replaced yet. I don't know how many millions of years they last, but anyway, you do have an air emittance valve and I'm just kind of like educating you on that. And we're coming on along here. Now, what happened when the electrician came out is he stubbed out all these outlet boxes so that when the drywall guy comes in, he puts the drywall in and they all fit nice and flush and it all looks nice like that. But he didn't make any allowances for this nice splash black. See this? Isn't that cool? So what happens is, is now you've got a gap between your box right there. And so that compromises the fire blocking right there. So if this box melts down, it comes in, melts the little plate and all that. And I was with a code inspector the other day. He called them uh, spark suppression rings. And he's pretty smart. I think he knew what he was talking about. But I've always heard them called extenders. I've got a link to Pretty Handy Girl on YouTube. And she shows you how you can put these little extenders in there. Some people call them goof rings. And they cost like, like three bucks a piece. It's like three, six, nine. You know, for, they're gonna charge a sales tax. That's how they get you. But for, you know, somewhere around 20 bucks, the electrician could have made all this right. You know, he could have, you know, that's all he had to do is just stick it in there, but nobody's gonna look in there. Are they? <laughs> okay, this makes some water. Um, I, I do know that the range works. I found the circuit breaker turned off. I'll leave it the way I found it. I promise, Mr. Builder. Then I come in here at these boxes, and if you'll notice, that box was dusty, all right? Well, you know, again, new construction, I hate discounting my work. But look at all that paint and stuff in there. It seemed to me like when the electricians, you know, when the dry run, I mean, he could have just put a lot of paper in there or something, but all that paint, I mean, that's, you know, that's just sloppy. That's what I can say. I can also say that it's a code violation, but anyway, there's that. We're going to eventually get a kitchen vent fan, and it does go out through the attic and it goes through the roof, but it's not here to talk about, and it's going to be plenty high enough. So anyway, we're just left with everybody's goodwill here. All these are GFCI protected, and they're supposed to be labeled so. And they're supposed to be labeled so. I know, those stickers are ugly. I get it. I peeled mine off. But they're supposed to be there so that you know that they're GFCI protected. And then... I think I might have mentioned this already, but I always repeat my stories. These on both ends of the kitchen island, these are supposed to be GFCI protected and they're not. That one's not GFCI protected. This one over here is not GFCI protected. Now we're coming along. Oh, look at there. Ha. At the end of the day, this is the daylight underneath the door, the pedestrian door right there. We're missing weather stripping around the pedestrian door into the garage, the garage pedestrian door into the side yard. We're missing weather stripping on this pedestrian door. And we got this little air gap right in there. And uh, so it needs to be just kind of bent out a little bit. Moving on along, we're in the clothes dryer area. This dryer is not long enough that it requires to be labeled. However, this is supposed to be labeled hot and this is supposed to be labeled cold, you don't know. And you're not gonna be like moving around and stuff, I get that. Okay, this is supposed to be GSI protected and it's not. Let me go back in here and there's our kitchen. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. The same thing with the escutcheon plates. This is all pretty much standard, okay? These are all GSI protected, but they don't have the little labels on them. Sure do not, don't have the little label. It's GSI protected though, I tested it. I tested it. I was gonna go in there, what was it? Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. Oh, I know what I was gonna say, I know. Let me back up a little bit. Bear with me. Bear with me. That's supposed to be GFCI protected as well. The range, and it's not. But they, these are. The disposal and the dishwasher is GFCI protected, but the island's not. Isn't that, isn't that wild? Isn't that crazy? Okay. One of our three escutcheon plates. Three commodes, three escutcheon plates. Want to find any escutcheon plates underneath here? No, we're not. I don't find place. This is GFCI protected. The fans all work. They're all vented out. This is the time. You might not know this. 
Unless I sound tired. This is the butler's pa pantry. Okay, got a nice little window that doesn't have a screen. Got that. Over here, these are GSCI protected. They don't have to be, but they are. Over here, these are not GSCI protected, and they don't have to be. And this is the end of the video. This is the part where I like to say thank you very much, dear client, for your trust. This is GSCI protected. For your trust in your business, those things mean the world to me. And if you feel, you know, so inclined, uh, maybe a good Google review, that, that means a lot to a small businessman. Got a little daylight shining right through here, too. And I can kind of speed through this, have been kind of speeding through it, because my client's been with me, you know, for a good part of the day. And we've talked about some of these things already, but I'm just kind of reminding, you know, my client and the builder. And uh, everybody seems to be getting along. They were until I showed up. So anyway, uh, again, thank you very much.